Hey guys, um, today is August the 12th um, and we are going to start into math, math curriculum today. Um, so you're going to need your math folder um, that you got last week. Um, if you did not get this folder last week, you need to make sure that you go by the office and pick one up. Okay. So you, um, unfortunately, the this folder does not have page numbers. So you're going to have to really pay attention to what page we're on. All your other modules will have page numbers, but this one does not. Okay, so today's will be easy. You're just going to open it, and we're on the very first page. And Mr. Potts is going to talk you all through um, place value chart today. Hey, guys. I am here to talk about place value, and I'm super excited to talk about place value because I think it's something that you can remember from elementary school. The first thing I want to start off when we talk about place value is what's on the left side of the decimal and what's on the right side of the decimal. On the left side of the decimal, I want you to label something on your chart, and we're going to write the word whole. So I want you to get your pencil, go to the top of your place value chart, and write the word whole. Okay? Anything to the left of the decimal is considered the whole. So when you think of money, that's your dollar bills. When you think of cents, that's to the right of the decimal, and that's going to be your parts. So let's go to the right of the decimal and label that parts. Okay? So the left of the decimal is whole. The right of the decimal is parts. Now, I like to think of decimals with money. So if I had $1.12, my one would be to the left of the decimal, because that's a $1, and my 12 cents would be part of a dollar. So that would be in the tenths, and that would be in the hundredths. We'll, we'll do a few examples later, but what I want to do before we do anything is make our place value columns. Now, the ones is already done for you. Remember, we're on the whole number side, so we're going to continue with that. Some of you may want to write horizontally. Some of you may want to write vertically, just whatever you want to do. But I think you'll remember from elementary, after the ones, you're going to have the tens, okay? And after the tens, you're going to have the hundreds. After the hundreds, you're going to have the thousands. And I think you're probably... Right with me. If I'm going too fast, you can always replay this. After the thousands, you're going to have the ten thousands. Hopefully, this is ringing a bell from your elementary fifth, fourth, or fifth grade years. After the ten thousands, you have the hundred thousands. I'm going to abbreviate hundred with H U N D period just because we don't have a whole lot of room on this column. And the uh, Next one is going to be millions. And the last one will be 10 millions. So like I said, everything to the left of this decimal is going to be whole. So if you think of money, this is cash, okay? Paper cash. Everything to the right of the decimal is part. So we're going to you're they're going to think of cents. And as we move down the place value chart, we're going to get so low that we're, we're the first one's going to be dimes, then we're going to go pennies, and then it's going to get so small that it's going to be smaller than a penny, okay? Now, the other thing I want you to kind of think about is if we're doing parts, and I know you remember this from elementary school, you're going to use THS, okay? Everything, we're just going to have a THS at the end. So the first place value position to the right of the decimal is going to be tenths. And that's where you get your THS, okay? So we'll go with tenths, okay? And after tenths, we will go to hundredths. And I'm kind of emphasizing that THS because that simulates that it's going to be part of. After hundredths, we're going to have the thousandths. After thousands, we're going to have the ten thousands. And after ten thousands, we're going to have the 
hundred thousands. I'm going to abbreviate a hundred again, just so it make it a little, little bit easier to write. And after the hundred thousands, we're going to have the millions. Um, the one example I'll use, let's say that we go to Dick's Sporting Goods and we buy a pair of shoes, we buy a hoodie, and we buy some shorts, okay? And our total bill comes to $176.12, okay? So where would I put my $176? That would have to be on the whole side of the decimal, okay? So $176. Would be here, and my 12 cents would be here. Now, my one is in the hundreds, that's a hundred dollars. My seven is in the tens, that's seventy dollars. My six is in the ones, that's six dollars, that's a hundred seventy six dollars. 12 cents, a one is in the tenths, that's a dime. The two is in the hundreds, that would be two pennies. So that's um, 10 out of 100, this is 2 out of 100. This next place value position would be so in insignificant, we, we wouldn't even have a coin to represent it. So as you move down to the right, the number gets smaller and smaller and smaller, okay? So hopefully this rings a bell about place value and it's a quick refresher. We're getting ready to move into converting um, in our next video. Thank you.